U.S. officials are on high alert as North Korea warns of a possible Christmas gift, their phrase, that could involve a missile test. A state news agency reporting dictator Kim Jong-un holding a meeting with his top military brass as satellite images show new construction at a site that has been linked to long-range missiles. Here now, Heritage Foundation national security expert James Carafano. James, great to see you. Uh, you. What happens if there is a test? What do we do? Well, I think the... I think the U.S. has actually been very clear on that. And then Began, when he went to South Korea, um, I think sent the message. Like, what the United States will do is it'll, it'll go back. It'll double down on sanctioning. There's lots more sanctions we can crank down on them. And, of course, last time the United States did some military demonstrations, flyovers and ships, uh, miss, additional missile defense deployments, demonstrating that we're, we're prepared to, to defend the alliance. I, I think the U.S. will pull out that same playbook and play it again. So, James, what happened to the uh, falling in love with a perfect new relationship, <laughs> everything that came before 2016 was a disaster and enabled this terrible, tyrannical regime to develop nuclear weapons, and now they're testing again. So, like, what's okay. gone on the past okay. two years? Well, first of all, this administration did not allow the North Koreans to develop nuclear weapons. They were before. developed. I, I didn't say it did. Can you answer what there? I actually asked? Yeah, so... Um, uh, so what was the question? So what happened in the past two years where we've made huge progress? Oh, so this is this is actually what I thought was the great strength of the U.S. strategy, which is maximum pressure and an opening diplomatic channel. The, the two great concerns are, one, there's not a war in Northeast Asia, and two, they lack the capacity to really seriously threaten the United States. The maximum pressure campaign, if you add up nuclear deterrence, conventional deterrence, missile defense, and the heavy sanctioning, which really limits their capacity to build out their optional, that really protects us. The, the diplomatic channel is to offer an alternative. So I, I don't think we lose any ground in terms of our national security because of the last two years. Matter of fact, I think we're actually in, in better shape. James, it's Carol Roth. What is it that you think that Kim Jong-un wants other than someone to pay attention to him and maybe some media attention? It seems unclear what it is that he actually is going after and whether there's a realistic plan or path that would ever be acceptable to us here in the United States or to anyone else for that matter. Yeah. Well, so you hit on the key point, which is this is a very opaque regime and it is very difficult for us often to know what exactly does he want. So the U.S. has been pretty consistent, and we have to negotiate denuclearization as a whole package. Kim has pushed back on that consistently for a year or two now, and so it's not clear is, is he really pushing back or, or what's an alternative strategy for him? Because I think the United States has been pretty clear it's not going to move off its position. And so the question we have is, is does he really believe that, or wait, is he just wait, kind of wait, waiting United until States, the president's reelected? United States has been anything but clear, James. What are you talking about? We've gone from, you know, rocket man... To my, be to my best friend, all those love letters. I mean, Trump got played. All right, look. No, all right, you can't time spin out. this, my friend. Trump got played like an unbelievable Stradivarius. Two look, summits, look, all look. the cameras. The f what did we get from all the summits that we gave to this tyrannical dictator? Nothing. Look, well, the U.S. the U.S. negotiating position has been exactly the same at, since day one. Two which is, summits. Two, two well, which summits. Is, okay, look. It's been the what same. What did we get? Well, look. What did we lose? Well, I mean, we, the answer we, is he we, lost we nothing. Sanctioned, we sanctioned and emboldened an evil dictator. We, wait a we, second. We, we legitimized him on, wait a the second. National, on the international well, stage. Oh, come on. You know that's not true. Has, has Kim have any more international access than he had two years ago? The answer is no. Oh, well, he well, hasn't well, tested in two years. But, yeah, so if anything, hold on. Hold on, on Jonathan. Let him finish his sentence. Go ahead. Well, look, if anything, Kim's lost ground because he hasn't practiced his arsenal for two years. So the argument makes no sense. And I've heard this before. He's gained international recognition. He has no more access. He can't do anything he could do Two years ago, so that argument is simply rhetoric. It's but, worse rhetoric than Trump's. Gary, but shame let's, on let, you. Let's be real. I, I, I'm no <laughs> diplomatic genius, uh, but this guy was never going to get rid of nuclear. He's not going to get rid of nuclear, and not going forward going to get rid of nuclear. That is his power at this point in time. This guy is a murderer. He's a thug. His people are inches smaller than the rest of the world because they're starved. The media, there isn't any. He's just an authoritarian. He's killed his family with anti-aircraft missiles. I, I, look, I don't blame the president for trying, but nothing's ever going to come of it. We'll be talking about this five years from now, and hopefully the guy 
guy never does something really stupid. James, let me let me just ask you a question that that stems from somebody who really does know the inside and out of what's happening in North Korea, and and that's John Bolton, uh, former national security advisor. Now he there was an interview that he had with Axios. Uh, in which he, he claimed that the Trump administration was just bluffing in terms of the maximum pressure. In fact, he says we should, if we wanted to apply maximum pressure, be, be uh, intercepting oil tankers, things that would really cripple the administration in, in North Korea and, and disallow them from creating any kind of missile technology. What do you think of that? Well, John's statement is actually true. I mean, North Korea is widely regarded as the most heavily sanctioned country on the planet, and that's true on paper. But there are additional sanctions which we have not implemented. So, yeah, we could actually put more sanctions on North Korea. And this is the point where, where Kim's really going to fix is if he tests, the administration's not going to back off. What they're going to do is they're going to put even more sanctions right. on. And we also have to remember, North Korea and Iran are linked together. If we gave a sweetheart deal to North Korea, the Iranians know that they would get the jet, get out of jail free card. On the other hand, as long as we're tough on North Korea, the Iranians know there's no relief for them. So the, so the president has no option other than the stick with seriously pressing both regimes. All right, James Carafano, great stuff, James. Thanks for taking the fire Thanks, as well guys. from our panel. Merry Christmas. And Merry Christmas guys. to you good as well, best. James. Good to, good to have you here. China may